Hey guys, welcome to the She's Got Gumption podcast with me, your host, Wendy J. Olson. On this podcast, you'll hear exciting interviews and one-of-a-kind stories from women who have seen it all, heard it all, and are ready to tell it all. Welcome to the She's Got Gumption podcast. Today, I've got Deja Richardson. This girl is a ball of fire. You're going to love her. This interview is great. It's actually our very first face-to-face, even though I've known her for years, known her mom for um, a little bit longer. And you guys, uh, buckle in, because it's a great one. This is the She's Got Gumption podcast. Deja, this is the meeting that has been in years in the making. Years, right? Yes. I love it. I love it. So um, I have known your mama longer than I've known you. Can you tell everyone just a little bit about who you are and and what you do just here in the here and now? Well, my name is Deja Richardson. I'm a 23-year-old mom, single mom with dad. Um, I'll be 24 on the 17th of June. Yes. Happy birthday. <laughs> Yes, I did, but I'm a mom. I'm from a small country town, uh, Eagle Lake, Texas. I've been in Houston for about, I want to say some years now, about seven, eight years uh, back and forth. Um, right now, I'm currently working, work from home due to COVID, and I'm enjoying it. It's really good to have the opportunity to work at, during the pandemic. Um yeah, I really just enjoy being a mom, um, supporting my son. He's five years old, right? Um, I met Wendy through uh, my mom. Um, I was in a sex trafficking and domestic violence relationship. She was a major supporter. I did never meet her. I just knew, hey, there's a lady that is willing to just fight, and she's fighting and praying, praying, praying. And I've just been waiting to meet you, and today is the day, and I'm so grateful for that. And um, yeah. Don't let me keep talking, girl, because I start crying. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. We When you reached out to me a few months ago, I even texted my friend, Lavina, that was, like, with me, like, through all of this. I was like, girl, do you remember Deja? And she's like, yeah, I remember her. And I was like, she just messaged me. She's like, no way. Oh, I just got chills, and I was just so excited. Like, it's just, it's so amazing to just see you. See, now I'm going to cry. So, we have to stop that. Uh. It's okay, because I, I was amazed, too, and um, when I got out and my mom said, hey, the people that's been fighting and praying for you are still here, even uh, even with you being out. And so, you know, when I finally found you, I was like, oh, I found a lady that's been supporting me, and she's never even, even seen me. So it's just, I've been so excited. I'm just so glad to see you. Oh, I just... I, you're probably like this crazy lady keeps writing to me and sending me Bibles. <laughs> like, oh no, oh trust gosh. me, we'll get it to it. But we love the support. We love to know that someone else is willing to fight and pray for us in when we're in situations as such. I love that you have just such an amazing story, and I just wanted you to be able to share it. And I mean, I I just want to hear all about it because I don't even think I've heard all of it right like I heard this just like portion the side and just like seeing you and like what you're doing now so just share with us your heart your story where have you come from well I uh first like I told you I'm from a small country town um I grew up in the church home I have a very spiritual family, love them all. Um, I participated in a lot of things in school, extracurricular programs, sports. I was really that active that active person, um, that active kid. Uh, I dealt with a lot of, you know, being bullied based off my, you know, being dark-skinned. Dark-skinned girls ha- tend to have a lot of issues um, and self-esteem issues. Can you elaborate a little bit more on that? On uh, on the dark skinned the, girls, yeah, and the bullying, yeah, yeah. I, I, the school I went to, uh, we were it's such a small town. I I would say now that I'm grown up, they were just bored, kids just bored, just finding something to do. And um, I think the thing that made it easy for me to get picked on was being dark skinned. Um, being dark skinned has always been a problem. Uh, it was really tough for me growing up that being bullied is what kind of like led to my bad decision making, sure. honestly, because um, I just wanted to fit in for my right. sakes. I'm, everybody's doing stuff around me. I'm the one person that's getting bullied. You just want to fit in. Yeah, so I yeah. started wilding out 
doing what I thought would, you know, put me in that crowd, in the group, get invited to the parties, things like that. Um, um, f great family. We do have, you know, of course, you have your dysfunctional families. Um, I do come from a, a broken family. We do love each other, but it's it's a lot of things, you know, that happens in the family that tends to give you that ex extra push to want to make a bad decision, such as um, I was molested in my family by close family members. Mm -hmm. I have forgiven them for it because they genuinely apologized to me. And I've asked God, hey, is this, you know, the right thing for me to do? Forgive them and moved on. And I feel great about it. Forgiveness is a very big key, especially um, when it comes down to the person that hurt you. Because once you forgive them, you're able to move on and live in peace. Um, forgiveness is is really just for you. It's not even for the other person, you know, it's just to release right. yourself. I love that you said that you shared that. Right. It gives you a, 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 a sense of peace with yourself, like a big weight over your shoulder. Like, dang, I don't have to think about that person hurting me, what they did, what they said, none of that anymore. Mm -hmm. Cause I've already let it go. It's gone. The power. But a lot of those things is what led to a lot of those bad decisions and, uh, it happened. I was that girl that got caught into the social world. I got into the internet game. Yes, I did, Wendy. I met my trafficker on an online dating site, girl. I did a dating it site? myself. Which one? Yes. You know, the, uh, the tagged. 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 Oh. I can go ahead and say it. Tagged. Yeah, you ever heard of those little sites, POF? Well, those are around now. I don't think it even runs anymore. But um, I did meet him on one of those dating sites. And I was 17. I was already on the verge of burning off due to the things I was going through with my childhood. He just gave me that, hey, I'll take care of you. You're mm. beautiful. I'll be with you forever. We can do this. I can help you travel. You don't have to worry about school. We'll finish school here. What did I do? Let's go. Let's do all of this. Ready to get out of the country. Tired of all this crap, bullying, all this depression. I was ready to go. So I went on and took that first step. And that's when I went on and made that choice. Um, at first, I did not really know much about it. He didn't, he didn't, he wasn't the guy. And I'm glad, I'm so glad that I'm able to be a voice. Like, oh my God, because it pressures me of how much women and i can't even just say because there's some men that are finesse too uh we use this word finesse in the game meaning like manipulate and i was finesse and that kind of what happens it's a way of sugarcoating uh what they actually want to do with you you know what right. i'm saying so like a grooming process right Right. It, grooming. It, that is the exact word. Um, so he basically groomed me. Um, it was a romance. He was supposed to be my boyfriend. That's what my promise, my boyfriend and my husband. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a I pimp. Let's do this. You know, it wasn't under that straight up. You know, mm -hmm. if it was straight up, I don't think. I would have made that decision sure. if he would have been straight up, which is why I feel like it's so easy for them to get us nowadays. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. they know what we want. You know what I'm saying? They know what we want. Um, we're just built that way. All we want is like love and attention to be told we're pretty. Okay. They know that, you know, and yeah, and I mean, we, I don't know how many girls I stood teaching a class last year with a friend and, and she was, they call it boyfriending or whatever. And I swear these girls like glaze look on their face. Like that doesn't happen. It was like, yeah, it does. <laughs> yeah, it does. Oh, yeah. They're like, who would fall oh, yeah. for that? I'm like you, you would fall for that. I would fall for that. <laughs> Please, like anything. Yes, yes. For real, because it comes in different shapes. It's like they find what what we really need mm -hmm. and and know how to get us. I yeah. don't know how to explain it, but no, yeah, you explained it perfectly. found a way to get me comfortable. And once I got comfortable with him and I felt like, oh, yeah, this my guy, this my guy. You know how we are, this my guy. It, that's when he said, okay. You comfortable? You ain't going nowhere. So this is what it is. Mm -hmm. I'm your pimp. You my hoe, my prostitute. Let's just be real. This yeah. is what's going to happen. And that's when I was um, taught about Backpage. I learned about the on way of you know getting out there. I learned about Backpage, Arrows, mm -hmm. um, uh, site Ekis.net. I learned about a lot of places like that. I've also 
did a little, a lot of street walking. I was going to say a lot, but I did lots of street walking. Um, I can say I've been out here on in Houston. I'm in Houston. I've been everywhere. I've traveled. Um, I've been everywhere that a 17 year old should not be. Um, period. But I can say people would ask me, well, why didn't you want to leave? Why didn't you want to leave? There was a lot of times that I did want to leave because I was getting abused. I was getting beat up, especially when he first told me what was going to happen. Like, look, this is what's happening. We're not really in a relationship. That's when I wanted to leave the first time. Um, The money, I can say one thing, the money stops us from leaving because we get used to making this certain amount compared to jobs, hourly pays, weekly base pay, you know, bi-weekly base pay. So that was one thing kept me in the game. He finessed me with that. Look at all this money you can make. If you leave, you're not going to have any of this. Um, the other thing that kept me there, uh, I loved him to death. I did because I fell, I fell in love with him before he spilled the beans about what we're actually, what we're actually doing. Um, the third one was I was afraid being abused and my family being threatened was a big thing. But after a while, I started kind of toughing it out, Wendy. I was thinking, you scary, but you're not that scary. You know what I'm saying? I have a tough family. So right. <laughs> my family had a few run-ins, so I wasn't, my nerves wasn't too bad. You're like, just wait till you meet my mama. <laughs> Right. It was one of them stronger in there. I started building some strength to actually allow somebody to save me. You know what I'm saying? But the one thing, Wendy, that I can say kept me in there that's probably keeping a lot of the women and young men that are being trafficked are their children. Mm -hmm. A lot of them have children by traffickers and their traffickers are holding the children against them. Like, I don't I don't want to say too much, but. My child was a decoy to keep me right. from leaving. And my heart is so huge. I would run into a burning building for my child. Well, <laughs> you, know you and saying? every so other I, mother, too. I mean, right. there's a, a mother that wouldn't run into a burning building. Well, that's not a good mother. Like, right. But right. right. Yeah. And yeah, I, I want to say that is a big thing is having children in the game is what uh, made me made me stay for so freaking long, which is why I I'm so glad that I'm a voice now and I was able to be free. I was actually rescued uh, by HPD. Um, I can't really go into detail, but it was a crazy, crazy week. I had been going through some stuff with fighting with my child and everything like that. And, and this was the week I was really trying to get out of there. It was like a marathon of me trying to get out of there. I had been getting beat up that whole week. I mean, lo- doors locked. Wendy, it got so bad. I, I laugh about it now, but I used to cry every day. It got sure. so bad. I was tied up to where I can go out. You know what I'm saying? So I was rescued because Trekker asked me to do something for my child. And that's when I said, I had to make the decision. Are you going to leave and leave your child? Mm. And then, you know, you can fight for them. Or are you going to stay here with your child? Keep getting beat. Y'all keep leaving. Your child keeps seeing you getting abused. Yeah. I had to make the toughest decision in my life that day. Sure. I had to make the mom decision. I had to leave. I had to run. I ran. I can't tell you where I ran, but I ran, left my son. Mm-hmm. I had to. Mm-hmm. I had to. I had to Very leave good. my son with him. And that, my mom came, HPD was there, and I I love HPD. Um, I know a lot of people don't support HPD because a lot that's going on, you know, with the protests and stuff like that. But I love HPD. HPD was there for me. They came in tough and they was ready and they were there for me. It was women HPD there, HPD there comforting me, making sure that I was okay, seeing if there was anything that I needed. And I think that's what needs to be known is that there are some good HPD officers that right. are there for us. Right. You know what I'm saying? A lot of them don't believe it because we're just going to jail. We're getting caught. We're going. We're getting arrested instead of rescued. Right. You know what I'm saying? So that's what that that's what stops us from asking for help, leaving because we're afraid of HPD. We're afraid of being shamed and judged based off what we did, and we're afraid of our traffickers. Yeah. 
story of my life, Wendy. There you go. I mean, you know, I, I don't, so I don't know about you, but I grew up like, you don't, you don't call the cops. You know what I mean? Like I grew up with the distrust for police. Like all my family was like volunteer firefighters and stuff. And so like, it was very like, Oh, he's a cop, you know, whatever. And so like, anytime I was in trouble, I never called the cops either. In fact, the one time I did, I apologized the entire time because I was like, I don't want to bother you. I don't want to get in trouble, you know, and I can't imagine being in your circumstance and like not having anybody to reach out to and feeling like if I call them, they're going to come after me. Like I did something wrong and you did nothing wrong. You were just an innocent girl that was taken and stolen from her family that, you know, got caught up in something and were were too young to make, make the choice. Right. But I mean, as far as like, I mean, they've come a long way. I mean, years ago they were like, it was like, you know, certain organizations against them, you know, and it was like, we're just going to go and be the renegades and stuff. And then they start listening and learning. And I love when uh, police departments do that because it's so good to be able to be like, no, like when you want to spot these things, you want to save these girls. You don't want them to be afraid of you. And I'm, right. they don't want to be worried about going to jail. Nobody wants to go to jail, you know, and they just want to know that like you're on their side. And so that, that right. was a long time coming, but I'm so glad to hear that that was a good ending to the story. Wonderful, 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 wonderful ending. Because I swear when I say them, that big step of having to sacrifice leaving your child. Yes, man, I, I'm really planning on writing a book with about my story because that that leaving my child was a big thing for me, and yes. I feel like I feel like that me writing that book would be really good for sex trafficking parents that has yes. been in a situation such as mine. Yes. Yes. What courage and bravery it took you to take a pause in that moment and say, I have a choice to make, and this is going to be the hardest choice of my life, but I'm going to do it because I know on the other side of this, we're going to be reunited and I'm going to be safe with him. That's courage, girl. Like that. Yes. Yes. I call that faith. <laughs> I love it. I love you, your energy. Are you allowed to share like the details of your rescue story and how you were able to get your son back? Um, I can say that I had to, I had to get, I got my son back through CPS. Um, they were already in our lives because of a situation that my trafficker puts in. Sure. Um, whoa, it was a roller coaster. That's all I can say. But I got my child back through CPS. I had to prove myself as a mother. I had to show them that I can work. I had to show them that I I live somewhere for six months and I'm stable. I had to prove myself because when you <laughs> when they have that on their record that you have mm-hmm. that you've been you're in the sex trafficking gang, you you've had drugs involved, they're really looking at that. They're really evaluating the parents to make sure that the children are safe, which I don't mind. I don't blame them for that because if it came down to it and they did have to take my son for a good reason, I would want them to evaluate the home that they would go to to make sure that they're they are not human trafficking, drugs, weapons. So it, it was a long, long, hard road. But how long have you been out now? I've been out since 2017, wow. uh, August 2017. I can tell you I got out August 23rd, 2017. And that's, I would never forget that day. I wow. would never. It was the day after my favorite first cousin's birthday. This is my heart, my heart. And I never forget that day. Yeah. I love that. (laughs) Coming up on three years. That's going to be, man, you better write a book. Okay. I'm just going to harass you at least once a week, message you and be like, Deja, you started that book yet? You write that book yet? Like, I'm just going to like keep poking at you until you do it. Stay on me. I love, I love being pushed, Wendy. Trust me. I love it. Especially now since I've been out three years, um, it's been this year, I want to say at the end of 2019, I, that's when I started to put some work in action because I'm not hiding no more. I'm not playing the hiding game because that's what they want us to play. I must stay safe. I don't do all that posting social media so you can see where I'm located. That's where we mess it up at. 
a lot of girls be like, why do they find us? We put ourselves out there with social media, yeah. but I don't care about that. But I'm not hiding them where it's time to fight. <laughs> yeah, right, right. So tell us a little bit about um, what your heart is and what you're doing now for women that are still caught in the life. I'm fighting for y'all. Y'all mm -hmm. better know that because I know y'all are going to see our video one day and do know that we are fighting for you guys. Me and Wendy, we are here for you. I know Wendy has a huge heart and she's going to always be there for you guys. <laughs> There's no such thing as a burnt bridge when it comes to us. <laughs> we That's got true. your back. That's true. But um, what I've been working on, I'm working on a baby. <laughs> I'm working on a baby and I call it the Entity Haven. My little baby, it's a profit organization. And what we are, I'm just going to be honest because it's time for us to do something different. We the middle man. Yeah. We the middle man, Wendy. <laughs> That's what I want to call us. We're going to be the entity haven middle man type. The messy deal. middle. All we want to do, yes, all we're doing is providing a gateway to the resources such as housing, um, medical assistance, continuing your education for those men that do not know. Sojourn Landon, Elijah mm -hmm. Rising, Rescue Houston, they don't have the opportunity to get to those places. I want to create the, um, uh, a program to where we go out and we're just meeting their needs, giving them toiletries and stuff. And mm -hmm. if they need our help, we're giving them the resources they need to get to those places because yes. they're not able to. Um, mm -hmm. That's what we're doing. We're just the gateway to um, providing, providing resources and meeting their needs by providing toiletries, food, um, things for their children. If we have women like me that were in the game with kids, stuff like that. Um, and this is for victims of drug addiction, sex, traffic, sex trafficking, and domestic violence in mm -hmm. Houston, Texas. We do want to go outside of Texas because, um, like I said, I've been trafficked everywhere. So I do not plan on just covering Houston, Texas. I do right. plan on covering other states that have a big um, number of human trafficking cases. Um, now I want to say Las Vegas is one. There's one thing, like one of my main goals for this organization is to kind of go to Las Vegas with this and minister to some of the women out there. Our organization... <laughs> We're just relationship builders. It's hard to explain it because I wrote it all down on paper, but it's like, I'm trying not to cry because this has been my dream. It's yes. a dream. Yes. And I'm trying not to cry. <laughs> and I'm doing it without a pimp. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh my God. Girls, you can do this. But yeah, we are. We are just building the relationships with them, showing them that we understand. We're not here to judge. We just want to help y'all. We ain't here to rescue you if you don't want to be rescued. We just want to give you the stuff you need and go. So when you do want us, you know that you can trust us. Mm, that is all. Good. So I've been in the game, I've been in the streets, and I've been all across the states. So I already know how it goes. And I just want them to know that there is someone there trust me we are here like we are so here and I'm not gonna cry but I did a pro I did a little project Wendy and I put some of this entity haven um field work to work and me and my mom passed out seven out of eight masks for COVID to the women on Bissonnet nice. and my spirit and my heart I cried after because I yes. held it together the whole time yeah you did <laughs> <laughs> but we did pass mask and it was an amazing ministry we did see uh, one woman and it broke my spirit which is why I say we are here for you because yeah. I did see some regular people like us out sure. here that pointed laughing pointed laughing just rude yeah. and, and that's why the entity haven is here to show you for people like that it's a hundred more of us here for you right Right. See, and mm. It's gonna be that one person, but we all over here for right. you. Mm. Don't worry about them. That's, that's all. That's all. Yes. I get I get really heated, Wendy. I'm a pit bull <laughs> when it comes down to this. I love pit bulls. <laughs> I am. I am a chihuahua, but a pit bull. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you just speak in so much wisdom for your age. Okay, which just tells you you've lived like three lifetimes, right? Already. 
But speaking to the ignorance, okay, of people that just don't know and who, I mean, at this point, let's, let's be honest. If you're ignorant, that's a choice, okay? Because there is plenty of education and internet and, and resources for you to learn something. Okay, so the people that point and laugh at like the women on Bissonette or the harass them or whatever and don't show them love and kindness and treat them like the human beings they are. Oh, I'll, I'll, I can go off on those people too. Um, mm-hmm. I had to keep it together that day. <laughs> do you um, still have friends that are still in the life as well? Yes. And um, yes, I do. I've. I, there is a girl that I still talk to, can't say her name, but, um, I met her in one of the strip clubs cause I did strip in the game as well. Mm-hmm. I was in the strip club. Um, yeah, I do speak. I still speak to a few of my girls from the club. Um, I do still communicate with some of the girls that were with me with the same trafficker. Thank God they're doing so great. I'm proud mm-hmm. of those women. They have, they're doing an awesome job. Um, one of them are, I can't really go into it because I don't know if it's in my position to share, but they are doing a great job in sharing their story where they're located as well. Mm, Everybody's awesome. just trying to stay in contact, hold it together. Yeah. It's good to be able to pour it out with other people that have the same experience as you though, that like we're like basically in the trenches, you know, with you that like you can still talk to. So I love that. Yeah. I love that. Can you speak to any of the, um, just racial inequality? Okay. Let's jump from ignorance to that because there's so much of that. And that's just a real hot issue of today. What did you experience in being trafficked that made you really feel like your skin color worked against you? Oh oh my God. Who um this is I don't like it, but I did. I felt better about being in a strip club than on the street because it's mm. you're not out there on the block walking. But I I would rather be in the strip club if I was still in the game. <laughs> just sure. saying because you're in a, a just in you're in a building. You're not outside walking heels, hopping in and out of cars with guys. You're up there on the stage. But my Oh my God, Wendy! I ran into a few racial issues. Club treasures. I I went to Treasures Houston, and I've I've I went there for a, a mil about a million times to audition there to work at that club, and mm-hmm. I did. I got shut down every time, and I knew it was because of my skin tone. Because I hate to say it, but every day that I went, it was. The only light skin tone you would see of mine was just a tad bit brighter. Um, mm-hmm. And that's just being real. Just a tad bit brighter. It's like, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, mm. Yeah, that. I ran into some race, racial stuff there at the club. Um, and it was, it was devastating because it made me work harder on the block. Being mm-hmm. turned down for clubs just put me right back on the street. Like, right. now I got to go walk because I can't strip on your pole. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? I just, <laughs> I'm just trying to make my life easier around here, guys. But now Survival, it's like, uh, yes. So it's like, yeah. Um, I, did, I did go to jail when I was in the game. I went to jail because I took a charge from my trafficker. I hate it, and I, mm-hmm. and I advise our women not to do that. Let's not make that decision, ladies, because it's very tough. It's hard to get it off your record because you, you dang near can't get it off. Yeah. Um, it's a blessing to have people such as Lone Star Legal Aid um, get you some good lore stuff like that to help you conceal your record um, and expunge them because I, I made the choice because I thought I was in love, but now I'm regretting it even to this day. Um, but yeah, I went to jail and I got into an altercation with uh, another lady and I'm a sweet girl. I'm mm-hmm. so sweet. I got a kind heart. I don't want to fight. And it was, it was racial. Um, our tank, uh, we had a program to where it's like we do um, counseling, we sit in the circle and talk about each other's lives and stuff like that right. and how we can help each other ministering affirmations and um the lady over the program said hey deja we 
been seeing you. We've been watching you. You're a strong woman. You're very empowering. Because when I was in jail, I was ready to get out the game too. And I don't know what came over me, but for some reason, I became like a, a women's empower in jail. Like I was trying to help other women get out and I was still in. It was yeah. crazy. Yeah, It was so overwhelming. But the lady was like, hey, we want you to take on this leadership role and we want you to start leading the, the meetings and stuff like that. And it was overwhelming for me because I was thinking, how can I lead and I'm not even out? Right. That's a huge role. You know what I'm saying? But she was like, I just see something in you. And when I took on that role, it caused a lot of hostility because I, I guess I stole the role from a white lady. It was mm -hmm. a white girl. And I I, I love everyone. I, there was no drama, nothing with me. I'm all peaceful. I'm thinking this is a good thing for everybody. <laughs> but it was some racial stuff there. And I was called a lot of one of them, them racial evil names. I've mm -hmm. been called a lot of them niggas and stuff. Yeah, it's going to be real. But, you know. <sighs> it's just how life goes. I've I've kind of gotten used to being that dark skinned African American. To be honest with you, I've learned to love myself in spite. You, you know? are just bold and beautiful. Okay, like your light shines so damn bright. Okay, and that woman must have recognized the fire in you right away because she was like, oh, "There's something that something is the spirit, man. You're just God." Just and I can't wait. I I got to remember her name because I will, I will like, if I ever meet that lady again, I will make sure to have her involved some way, you know, to speak with the, the entity Haven or something. Because when she says she saw something in me, now that I think about it, I'm like, she must have really have. She has to really have because now where I'm at now, I'm thinking, okay, those people that have faith in me were right. Like, mm -hmm. I'm so glad that I kept what they said in my head and didn't forget about it you know I'm glad I kept you in my mind Miss Rhonda everyone in my mind uh, it's just awesome yeah <laughs> you're so cute <laughs> get over you you're adorable I just love you so much oh my goodness I hate that you say you've had to get used to this though that breaks my heart that you have to get used to that but I love that you say that no matter what you love yourself and you're amazing and beautiful and you fully know that about you when you got arrested and ended up in jail that time, what was it for? Are you allowed to speak? That? It was for drugs. Okay. It was for drugs. And I did not take drugs at the time. I wasn't even a cigarette smoker. I don't do any of that. <laughs> and um, it was so bad. It was me and a few other girls involved underage. The girls were younger than me. Oh, you know, gosh. they were still, and I was, we were all still in high school. But I was the only one that actually left my school. They were still yeah. attending school. You know what wow. I'm saying? And it was so bad. It was so bad. Um, a situation happened with one of the girls that was there uh, with me and my trafficker. And she called the laws. The laws came. And they came at the wrong time. And um, it was all of us together. And my trafficker told me to take the charge. Girl. Mm -hmm. My crazy self, love, dumb love, said, oh, okay, because he hit me with one of them, I love you, baby, just take the charge, I'm going to bond you out tomorrow. He did, I can't be mad because he did, but, but yeah, ladies, it's not worth it. No, no, it's, it's not definitely worth not. that $200 bond out, just FYI. <laughs> Man, oh my gosh. So did he have other... Nothing. Did he have other girls as well in your circle? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It, we had so many. Oh, my God. And I say we because I was I was his first girl because okay. I was so easy. You know what I'm saying? I think I, I think I got with him when he was first getting out of jail for something he done way before he met me. Wow. And uh, I was his first girl. I, I was the bottom, what they sure. call the main chick, whatever you want to call it. Um, I didn't like that role because it comes with too much, too much responsibility mm -hmm. and too much loyalty. And I'm loyalty, but only to a certain extent when it comes to my child. Right. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm only 100 percent loyal to my kid, kid. Like when it comes to like stuff, when it when it's crime, it's, I can't I can't get I just can't can't get mm -hmm. down. And um, I really felt bad because I did recruit other women. I had the job. Sure. He's not going to go out and recruit women because women are more comfortable talking to other women. Right. So 
you know, especially when it comes to work and things like this, I, I did a lot of talking women into feeling comfortable uh, doing things with men. I had to, I t- and then when I got tired of that, because I felt like, okay, I don't want to have sex with guys. So why would I want these girls to have sex with guys? And then it really got bad when I had my kid because I started thinking like a mom. Yeah. I really started feeling really, really bad. Right. And I was thinking, no, this is not okay. These no, nobody deserves this. None of these girls. None of these right. girls. I felt bad about uh about about encouraging those women to stay. A lot of them want to leave. And I was that one that was like, no, it's okay. He just mad for right now. And I feel so bad. And if you guys are watching in the future, do know that I love you. And I'm so sorry that I encouraged you to come and stay. Mm -hmm. I'm truly sorry if you were abused and I wasn't around at the time. And to the ones that were abused in front of me, I pray that you are healing. I pray that you are having the best time of your life because it eats me up every day inside to know that I was that one too bring you guys into it like it breaks my heart every day to know that I encouraged another one of my sisters to tell their body to give their life to a man or woman because you got your women pimps out there to even do that you know and I feel so terrible and I, I pray for you girls every day I pray for you girls every day you know your names you know who you are out there I love you guys so much right here you just have a heart it makes me cry you have such a heart for this <laughs> my girls. i mean let's be serious though being in an abusive relationship which is exactly what a trafficking situation is it's an abusive relationship you're doing whatever you can to survive you know and self-preservation comes up and you're trying to protect you and your son and i mean i don't blame you i mean i doubt those girls blame you either i'm sure they were they were glad to have you I know they feel. I know they feel me because we have had a, a, a good relationship with it, with a lot of them. For one, being the bottom, you have to build a relationship right. with them so that they can trust you. Um, yeah, they understand. They understand. Even the ones we got into a few tussles, girl. We was all dating the same man, but we done now. <laughs> We all good. We all we, good. We learned from that. We've seen the yeah, HBO bro. special, you know, Big Love. We know how complicated that could be, you know? <laughs> but we love you. We love you. We love you. I love you. I know your what your motives were. I know your motives weren't, mm-hmm. weren't for that. We all that. care for each other. I know that we were all good sisters. We called mm-hmm. each other wifeys because that's what we called each other in the game. And we yeah. were good wifeys. We did look out for each other. And, um, yeah. I still got y'all's back if y'all need me. Y'all know I'm a pit bull. <laughs> always been always been that. I'm sweet with sour. Right. <laughs> but don't cross me. Exactly. Exactly. Right, right. <laughs> I love that. So I mean, I heard so much of your heart and just who you are. Is there anything else you just want to share with women who are either still in the life or trying to get out or fresh out? Um, yeah, I wrote a very good quote down. I wrote it down because I've written, is it, maybe it's not for right now. Some people say, some, I heard a thing, if it's not meant for right now, it's probably meant for later. Mm. I can't find it right now. But what I do want to say, um, to the women and men out there, and I keep saying women and men, because I've seen men traffic too, but to my women and men out there, um, do know that you call us outsiders we are here for you um Mm -hmm. we're not here to judge you right if you need our help we're here and i keep saying we're here because that's the thing that y'all don't know is that somebody's here for y'all because our controller is telling us every day that it's only gonna be them it's only them it's only them that you can depend on and i just want you to know guys that um we do love you there are people here ready to fight for you and provide the things that you need and the resources that you need to grow and to be yourselves again because i know that you're not able to fully be yourselves ladies and gentlemen Mm -hmm. and you know that um but yes uh let's stay off that uh internet ladies let's be (laughs) careful Let's be careful with the internet dating. Yes. Oh my God. Thank you, Wendy. That's what one of them was. Yes. Mary, Mary. <laughs> <laughs> Thank 
careful on the internet, so ladies. Let's be so careful. True. Be careful with the guys uh, that we're talking to. I wrote. I wrote three things that might help y'all. Three signs you're talking to a pimp online. Mm, One good. is the smooth talk. You already oh. know how to smooth talk, though. Yep. Uh huh. Oh, you beautiful. Uh huh. All the smooth talk. Um, they're gonna romance you. That's part of that smooth talk. Um, immediate, immediate pickup, meaning they're ready to pick you up that same night. Right. Ain't no nor no normal man, no real man is going to want to take you home the first night. Right. And that's or just no good real. man. <laughs> no good man. Good man. No good. A real it's not man marriage material. <laughs> <laughs> right. On a few dates. Of course, we know it's like some of the movies. Oh, first first date. It's like I've met you forever. I've known you forever. OK, that's cool. But a real real man is going to take you out on a few days. They're not going to offer you. Uh, let me pick you up and, and stay the night the first night. That's the second sign you're talking to a trafficker right mm, there. Um, let's see. And then the other one was. Um, the promises, Lace. When you start getting these promises that you know it's too early to get, mm -hmm. like marriage, marriage, education, they can help you continue your education. That is a big one. Any any God is telling you they can help you continue your education. Um, they can help you travel. Anything dealing with material material stuff, that is a sign that you're talking to a trafficker. So we got one romance, that smooth talk that automatic pickup and three those promises mm, that's good that's good you're such an educator too oh my gosh i just okay first of all amazing first face to face officially you know um but your story is so empowering for women of any age because you've got the young women out there who just think like all they need is just some guy to take care of them and you're like oh hell no don't do that and then like just women who have been through what you have been through, similar trauma, just feeling like all that regret and that burden that like they need that healing. And just the other side of this is your joy and your passion and your grace and your love for people. I love your love for people. You kept talking about like, we're just here to build a relationship, build a relationship. People neglect that so much. People just think we'll just create a program and they will come. And it's like, no, you need to connect. Connection is what we are wired for. We worship a three in one God. He is a relationship all by himself. So he yes made us like him to need connection. And so those women walking down Bissonette right now, they just need a friend. They don't need a savior. They don't need some lady to pull up in her suburban and be like, I will buy you a house. No, like right. just, just say, hi, what's your name? Can I get you a water? I don't know. So, like, she is a human being on the other side of that. He is a human being on the other side of that. And you exemplify that perfectly. It made me cry. I gotta. I have to write it down. We just need a friend, not a savior. Yes, yes. I love that. We have so a savior because that's all. Because that's all. Because that's all. Everybody want to be our savior in the game. We mm -hmm. can we just get some help sometimes? Just can we just get some toilet paper, or just a pad, <laughs> a wipe? Can we get a toothbrush? You know, a can tampon. we get some masks? Yes. You know? <laughs> and that's it. We can't talk to you right now. It's not a good time. Right. Mm. Oh. That's good. That's so yes, good. I love it. Well, share with everybody your website for your nonprofit, what you're doing, what your needs are right now, because you are in the beginning stages of building and you are on fire. So you're going. What do you need? All righty. So guys, first you can find us on Facebook. Uh, our name is the NTT Heavy. Haven, the Entity Haven, got a little nervous. <laughs> entity Haven. Um, <laughs> ooh, you can also, um, our website is theentityhaven.com. Um, and, we, and you can find me on Instagram at one of Susie's, the number one of mm -hmm. Susie's, S U S I E S. Susie is my grandmother. She built me like this. She built me to be a strong, empowering pit bull woman i wish yes. she was alive right now to tell you herself mm -hmm. but yes um right now we're like i said we're just starting we're growing um 
right now we're 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 trying to get help. We need help on. We need help with toiletries. We need toiletries and masks right now. That's all. We're not the organization that need all the money. We don't need that. We need stuff for right now, yeah, right. which is pandemic stuff. Yeah. We just need pandemic stuff, guys. Toiletries, doomsday stuff. That's it. We got thousands of girls out here, thousands of guys out here being trafficked. Like I say, girls and guys. Right. For people that think it's just women, uh, fathers, brothers, cousins. Y'all mm-hmm. have friends out there that could possibly be in this situation that are males. Yes. Um, but we do need toiletries and stuff like that for both male and female. Um, we, Our thing is entity go bags, which, which are adult backpacks. We need adult backpacks for both sexes. So that'll give the uh, women and men out there easier way to get up and go. We don't need a purse. We don't need a big bundle bag because if anything goes down, we just need to dip and go. Right. Um, that's it. That's what we need right now. We're not, we don't need too much, just toiletries and backpacks. I love that. And they can get a hold of you through your website or you guys can email me and I will get you all the information you need. Deja, you, I just love you. Your fire is contagious and you're going to change lives. And man, I love that we know where the fire from us comes you know and that we get to share that and you're running with it and you're running with jesus i just i love it yeah that you're is amazing. my main man my main man jesus anything else Woo. you want to share before we wrap this up i love you wendy <laughs> and i really appreciate this opportunity i love you my girls and my guys out there we will keep praying for you and fighting for you that's all what did I tell you? I told you she was full of fire. And I just love it. I love her spunk. She is the definition of gumption. You guys, be sure to check out The Entity Haven on Facebook and TheEntityHaven.com. Check out Deja. Check out what she's doing. If you're in the Houston area, get involved. Get involved in the fight. Be there. Uh, support the local organizations that are on the front lines. Um, If you can send supplies, oh my gosh, please do always support someone who is just starting on the front lines of an anti-trafficking organization. The work is hard, it's mentally draining, it is physically draining. So you guys, anything you can do to support her, um, please go ahead and do that. You guys, thanks again for listening. I always love bringing you these interviews and these amazing women. Um, thank you for listening. If you want to catch up with me in between episodes, you can catch me over at she's got gumption.com, which is the name of my new blog. Um, it's actually the same blog. It just has a new address, new destination. So be sure to check that out and stay tuned for more on the she's got gumption podcast on my YouTube channel. Y'all have a good one.